Let's close our eyes for a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name today. Thank you for what you've done in the past. Thank you for what you are doing today. Lord, I present everyone before you. And I pray, Lord, this transformation we're talking about will be the experience of everyone in Jesus' name. Make the bad good. Make the good better. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. We're talking about fulfilling a great dream. Fulfilling a great dream. I know that every one of you, you know what a dream is. But there are two senses in which we use that word. What's a dream? It's something that one seems to see, or one seems to participate in, or one seems to experience during sleep. But that's the ordinary definition. Now you want to understand the figurative use of that word. There is another meaning, a mental picture of the future. A great thing, a great experience, a great project, still to be realized and you say i have a dream there is a picture painted in my mind i see with the eyes of the eagle and i see beyond the natural and i see what i'm going to be i see what i'm going to do i see what i'm going to have i see where i'm going to be that is a dream we're talking about it's still an experience in the future a project you still have in mind and it is God giving, it's the plan of God. And I pray that good plan painted in your mind, painted in your heart, still for the future, you will have it in Jesus' name. But the question is, how do you plan to realize that dream? How do you intend to fulfill that great God-given dream that the Lord has allowed you to have? I'm going to touch on three points very quickly. Number one, winning through the supernatural winning through the supernatural you know what that dream if it is given by god the devil is going to fight it night and day that's why you need the help of the lord and that's why i come here to bring you into partnership with the lord there is a devil that fights night and day against your progress against that plan against that dream that's the reason the bible says in ephesians chapter 6 Reading from verse 12, it says, for we wrestle. It says, we wrestle. Even the apostle did not exclude himself. You know why? He said there was a plan. He had a big dream. He was to go to Thessalonica. And then he said, Satan hindered us. He knew there was a warfare. He knew there was a fight. You better understand. A Paul, the apostle, a giant, a champion in the realm of faith, if he had this devil and all these uh, parts of, uh, of the opposite side fighting against the dream, against the progress, you better understand, he'll fight against your progress. That's why he said, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers and against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's why if you are going to realize that dream, then you know that you will win only through the supernatural. There's somebody, whenever you think about a dream in the Bible, you think of Joseph. And you know God gave him a dream, and it was a dream of being a leader. It was a dream of making it in life. It was a dream of being ahead of all the other people he knew. But Satan fought against that dream. And there was only one way that that man was able to realize that dream. He won through the supernatural. That's the same way you can do it. Only Christ can make you overcome and win. And you know something? Satan is so happy when you keep yourself away from Christ. Because he knows that is the only way you can overcome. That's the only way you can win. And when I give the altar call and I bring you into partnership with Christ, that the presence of Christ may be in your life, that the power of Christ may begin to operate in your life, Satan is so happy when you sit back and you say, I will have nothing of that thing they call salvation or conversion. I will have nothing of that thing they call religion. And uh, Satan says, good boy, good girl, sit down. Don't mind them. Don't listen to them. You know what? Because he knows that dream, that project 
if it is going to be carried out, it is going to be through, number one, the partnership you have with Christ. Number two, the presence of Christ in you. Number three, the power of Christ and the power of God in your life. That's why you will not allow anything to hinder you. You will come to the Lord. That's why it says in verse 13, wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, thank God you will withstand that enemy. I said you will overcome that enemy. And you are going to win in the battles of life in Jesus' name. There is a verse of scripture I want you to notice. I want you to mark it. And I want you to have it in your mind. This is specially for you. It's in Isaiah chapter 8 and in verse 18. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 18. You'll win through the supernatural. In verse 18 of Isaiah chapter 8, it says, Behold, I am the children whom God, whom the Lord has given me, are for signs and for wonders in Israel. You are for signs and for wonders from this very day. The power of the Lord will never fail in your life again. You come into partnership with the Lord today, and the Lord is showing you to the angels of heaven. He's showing you to God the Father in heaven. He says, look at him. He's just come back home. He's received me as his personal savior. He has become a child of God. And he says, behold, I and the children whom the Lord has given me were for signs and wonders in Israel. You know that Jesus Christ, everywhere he went, the supernatural followed him. Signs and wonders were present in his ministry. Now he comes into your life. What do you think he comes to do in your life? To continue what he did in Galilee, what he did in Nazareth, what he did in Capernaum, what he did when he was here on earth. He was for signs and wonders. And when you come to the Lord in your academics, there will be signs and wonders. In your family, there will be signs and wonders. In any project, there will be signs and wonders. In the present and in the future, there will be signs and wonders in your life. I praise God you are going to win. I said you are going to win. Then you ask me the question, which is the way to success? That leads me to my point number two. The way to success. I'm taking that success as a now. I'm taking that success as a destination. And I'm, and I'm looking at the road map. And I'm looking at the signpost, and those milestones, I'll give you the milestones now. I see success there. I see the project there. I see the achievement and the fulfillment and the satisfaction there. And I'm on the road. When I start with Christ, I'm on the way to success. And you too, I invite you to come along so that this success we're talking about, you will be there. I see you getting there already by faith. You will be there in Jesus' name. In, in Jeremiah chapter 6, Jeremiah chapter 6, reading there from verse 16, you will find that way. And it's the way of progress, and it's the way of success in your life. You will look back at this day when you came to know the Lord as a partner in business, a partner in the project, a partner in the achievements of life. And you will thank God that you made Jesus Christ your personal Lord and Savior. And signs and wonders will never cease from your life in Jesus' name. In Jeremiah chapter 6 and in verse 16, does says the Lord, it says, stand in the ways and see and ask for the old path. Where is the good way? And walk ye and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your soul. The Lord is telling you, uh, we know success is there. We know there, there is a road that leads there. And you are asking, how do I get there? And Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Anyone that comes to the Father, he will come by me. I give you seven points quickly. If you want to get to that place, we call success number, number one. Reject. What are you rejecting? Reject unbelief. Reject all negative thoughts contrary to God's promise. The Lord already has given you the promise. He said, you will do well in life. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Anything that comes to the contrary, anything that is negative, anything that says, no, you can't make it, you are not one of the number. They speak a special language. They are special people. They come from royal family. And success is not in your own hereditary. You cannot make it. That's negative. That's unbelief. Reject unbelief and all negative thoughts. Number two, inject. The first one is to reject, and the second one is to inject. What are you injecting? Not drugs, not cocaine, 
not uh, hard drugs. You inject thoughts, ideas that will lift you up. What are those ideas? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And the Lord is assuring you to inject that in your mind. Inject that in your thought. Those good thoughts, those good words in the Bible, the promises of the Lord. Nay, I am more than a conqueror. Inject that into your spirit until you feel like a giant. Until you feel that you and God, you cannot fail. Until you feel that Jesus Christ is inside that boat and you cannot sink. Inject those good thoughts in your mind. Number three, select. What are you selecting? The good books. The courses you need to go through. The places where the success, where the success is. Uh, the, the people that are people of success. I mean the books that will inspire you. The books that will fire you. And the things that will make you to say, yes, I'm pursuing. Get rid of those things that will discourage your mind. As if, no, I cannot make it. I've always failed. I'll always be failing. You will select the books and the courses and the people and the places that will inspire and fire you on until you achieve that God-given dream. Number four is to project. What do you project? You don't project failure. You don't project those negative things. You don't project the curses that people are placing on others. You are not under a curse anymore. The power of the Lord is on you. You project. You stand up straight. You square your shoulders. You lift up your head. You look at the devil straight in the face and say, I'm for signs and wonders. You project something good, something marvelous. You project success. You are not a failure. The hand of the Lord is upon you and things are different. You will never be the same again in Jesus' name. Project God's will. Project God's mind. Project God's dream that is for you. And don't be distracted or discouraged. And God is standing by his word to fulfill it. And then number five is to collect. What are you collecting? The best energy. Your best resources. All at your disposal. Bring everything together and collect them and walk through with them. And do your very best with all you've got to succeed. You know, success doesn't come on the people that sleep all the time. The people that do not walk with their hand. The people that will not exercise and wake up and stop their brain. The people that are lukewarm. The people that are, that are, that are kind of sleepy to life. And they feel that something will just jump up on them. No, you have to do something. Your energy, your resources, everything at your disposal. Collect everything together and give each a go. And then number six, subject. You subject all suggestions and pieces of advice to the scrutiny of the word of God. Oh, people will talk to you. They will give you suggestions. They will say, do you think you can make it? Do you think you can? Oh, yes, you say, I subject. Every thought that comes, I subject. Every suggestion that comes, I suggest. I subject every piece of advice to the scrutiny of the word of God. Even if it's a dream. You know, sometimes in a dream, it might appear that you will not make it. Subject that dream to the word of God. If it is contrary to the promise of God, throw it away. Number seven is to expect. You expect to succeed in the God-given dream. Because true faith is that thing that gives you expectation that the promises of God will be fulfilled in your life. There's something to reject, and then there's a thought and the word of God to inject into you, and there are the books and the people to select, and there, are, there is the God's will and the word of God to project, and there is your energy and your resources to collect, and then all those thoughts and suggestions to subject them to the will and the mind and the word of God, and then you can expect there's going to be a miracle in your life. I said there's going to be a miracle in your life. And that leads you to the wonder that you get, the wonder of wonders, the wonder that you have in your life through the Savior. And what a wonderful scene, knowing the Lord experiencing a salvation that brings you into a life of wonders. As you give your life to the Lord, wonders will never stop in your life in Jesus' name. Lord, he has touched your life already. Just by being there, your life is being transformed. And it will transform everything there is to be transformed in your life in Jesus' name. It will give you a good perspective in life, a good vision in life. And you will have a purpose for living. It will bring the best out of you. 
and they will remove all better, ex all bitter experiences of the past in Jesus' name. As I see you, I see a child of wonder. I see a brother, a sister of wonder. And the devil will wonder at your life. Even angels will wonder at your life. Your fellow students will wonder at your life. And your neighbors will wonder at your life in Jesus' name. There are seven wonders. Number one, the wonder of his word. The wonder of his word. You know, he calls you. Isn't that a wonder by itself? Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. What a wonder that the Lord is inviting you. The wonder of his word. Number two, the wonder of his will. What's his will? It says, I know, I know what I'm thinking about you. It says it's to give you an expected end. It is not of evil. The will of God for you is that you will succeed in life. And that will will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Number three is the, is the wonder of his witness. You know, when you become a Christian, you become a child of God, Jesus Christ comes into you. And then from that time on, first of all, he witnesses in your heart, you are now a child of God. And when you say you are, when the Spirit of God witnesses that you are a child of God, it means everything God has, all the resources God has, everything now belongs to you. It reminds me of a child, it was the first day in school. And uh, when he, the teacher said, every one of you stand up, and introduce yourself. And uh, this boy got up. You know, the others just introduced themselves. I am so and so. I'm coming from such and such a place. And my father, my mother is this and that. But this boy got up and he said, I'm Johnny. And I'm beautiful because God doesn't make anything ugly. He said, I'm Johnny, but I'm, I'm successful because God doesn't make a failure. He said, I'm Johnny, and I'm going to lead this class because God sent me here to be a leader. Isn't that an introduction? When there is a witness in you that the Lord has raised you up, he has given you a dream, and that dream is going to be fulfilled, and anything you set your hand upon, before you even begin to try it, there is a witness of the Spirit in you, you are going to succeed. I said you are going to succeed. I affirm you are going to succeed. The wonder of his word, the wonder of his will, the wonder of his witness, and the wonder of our worthiness. That's number four. The wonder of our worthiness. You know, when you come to the Lord, he makes you worthy. He makes you worthy. And you will not be saying, I am unqualified. I am unworthy. I am a non-entity. I cannot do anything. My family, I came from an idol, a worshipping family. I never made anything good. I'm not worthy of the least of the things that the Lord will do. Now the Lord has made you worthy. And it is a wonder of our worthiness. When we were lost in sin, when we were far away from the Lord, he brought us near so that he can make us worthy in the presence of the Lord. Number five is the wonder of his wisdom in us. You know what uh, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians Chapter 1, verse 30, it says, He has made Christ unto us our righteousness, our justification, and our wisdom. When Christ comes into you, foolishness is gone. And the wisdom to approach life, the wisdom to be what you ought to be, because he lives in you, this is the one that is wiser than Solomon. This is the one that is greater than Solomon. And he lives inside you. And it's a wonder of, of his wisdom in us. Number six is a wonder of winning with him. Of course, when you come to the Lord, you understand, you and Christ, you cannot fail. Christ and you, you cannot fail. There is a partnership between you and the Almighty. There is a partnership between you and the one that conquered the devil. Between you and the one that conquered sickness. Between you and the one that conquered all the demons. And there is a wonder of winning with him. Number seven is the wonder of his welcome. And he says, he stretches out his hand. He's saying, I'm waiting for everyone and I'm waiting for you I have a lot I want to do in your life a lot I want to give you I want to make you a child of wonder I want to you'll be a wonder to yourself you'll say I didn't know I could do that I didn't know I could achieve that I didn't know I will ever get to the top you will get to the top in Jesus name if you have a dream, I mean a big dream, I mean a great dream, I mean a God-given dream. If you have a dream that only God can help you to achieve, only God can help you to realize, you want to come to the Lord so that your life eventually will be a wonder. There is a bright future that is going to unfold in your life and it begins to unfold today. 
the time of joy, the time of fulfillment has come for you. And this success we are talking about, and this achievement we are talking about, and this supernatural wonder we are talking about, it belongs to you. If you will let God walk in your life, you will smile. I said you will laugh. I said you will be joyful. Sorrow, everything will pass away as the water that goes under the bridge. Things are changing. Things are changing. Your family will never be the same again. Your life will never be the same again. Because, you know, they say that thing is difficult. Nobody can do it. You will do it. You will succeed with distinction. Why don't you bow your heads now and pray? Let God make you a wonder. Let God make you a wonder. He wants to make a wonder out of your life. He wants to turn that bitterness and that uh, ugliness and that failure and that defeat and that disappointment and that sorrow and that suffering and that sickness and that unfortunate situation. He wants to turn everything around. He wants to touch your family. He wants to do something in you. You'll be a wonder to the community. You'll be a wonder anywhere you go. Come into partnership with Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. You know, it's so wonderful as we're here. I told you, if you are bad, I thank God that you are here. If you feel you are good, that's wonderful. He'll make the bad good. He'll make the good better. And if you want to come into partnership with Christ so that the Lord can make a wonder out of your life and we can seal that covenant with the Lord here, you'll raise up your hand wherever you are. Raise up your hand. You want to be a wonder. You want the Lord to do that supernatural thing. You want to win through the supernatural power of coming into partnership with Christ. Where are you? You will raise up your hand. You are raising up your hand. You are showing the devil I'm not in your camp anymore. You are showing the devil I'm not under a curse anymore. You are showing the devil I'm not under that oppression anymore. You are showing the whole world I'm not in the company of the failures anymore. Where are you? You want to come into partnership with Christ. I can't see your hand very well. Can you stand up wherever you are? If you are raising up your hand, can you stand up? If you are raising up your hand, can you stand up? If you are raising up your hand, you want to come into this partnership with Christ. You want to join the winning team. You want to come into partnership with Christ. And you want to win with Christ so that the Lord can make you a winner. Where are you? You will stand up. Stand up, please. I'm waiting for you. This is your chance. What the devil will want is for you to sit back, is for you to say, well, I don't think I need any of those things, because he knows you cannot win except you come into Christ. Where are you? Please stand up. Please stand up. All those who are standing, please come to the front here. I need to see you here and pray with you. Just leave where you are and come. Come, keep coming, keep coming. Open your eyes, open your eyes, keep coming. You want to come into partnership with Christ? You want to win with him. Through the supernatural power of the Lord in your life, you will be a winner from this very time. The Lord will touch your life. The Lord will change your life. I'm telling you, you will almost not recognize your own self again when you look into the mirror. He'll take your sickness away. He'll take bad things away from your life. He'll take failure away from your life. He'll make disappointment something of the past. You will say, where have I been before that I didn't come to Christ? Something good, something new, something better, something supernatural is happening in your life today. Keep on coming, keep on coming, keep on coming. The Lord is waiting for you. The Lord is waiting for you. He calls you into a partnership with him. Come, come and win. Come and succeed. Come and do better in life. The Lord is calling you. Keep on coming. Keep on coming. Keep on coming. The Lord is waiting for you here. If you are bad, come. He'll turn the bad person into a good person. If you think you are good, of course, come. He'll make the good person better. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. The Lord is waiting for you. And as you come over here, just close your eyes and pray. This is a turning point in your life. This is a moment of the supernatural coming into partnership with humanity. Come on. Keep on coming. Keep on coming. The Lord is waiting for you. You'll never, never be the same again. You will never be the same again. You will never be the same again. The Lord will touch your life. And he will put you on the winning track. You will win. Yes, you will win. You will win in life. Come on. The Lord is waiting for you. The Lord is waiting for you. The Lord is waiting for you. That great dream, big dream, God-given dream of a bright future, it will be fulfilled in Christ. 
Keep on coming. Keep on coming. Don't stay back. Don't stay back. You can only win through Christ. You can only have the success through Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. I rejoice with you, all those of you that have come to the front. Because the bright future is in front of you. You will win through Christ. I said you will win through Christ. All the sorrows of the past, all the disappointments of the past, the failure of the past, they are gone in Jesus' name. Close your eyes and we're going to pray together. You will say the things I say and you will make those words your own words because you are stepping into a boat now with Christ and he's taking us to the destination of success. You say after me, Almighty God, I thank you for your word. I almost gave up. I thought there is no way. But now you have shown me the way. Lord, I've heard about Jesus Christ. I heard about his invitation. He told me to come. Now I come. I give myself to Christ. Lord, I am sorry for the bad things I did before. Forgive me. Change my life. Put your grace into my life that I will not go back to my vomit anymore. I believe you have accepted me. I believe you have forgiven me. I believe things are different now. A new day has started in my life. I am now in the winning team. Success is mine. Because salvation is mine. I believe you have answered my prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen means so let it be. And it is so already. Amen. Close your eyes. I pray for you. Now, Father in heaven, I thank you for all these, my brothers and sisters who have come and a change, a transformation has happened in their lives already. Confirm it in their soul, in their spirit, in their mind. In Jesus' name. Amen. I pray, Lord, you forgive all their sins. You cleanse them from all unrighteousness. Let a new life be given unto them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. Shall we rise up, please? The time for your miracle has now come. You are for signs and wonders. I said you are for signs and wonders. Signs and wonders will never stop in your life. Will never stop in your family. There is a breakthrough for you today in Jesus' name. You will lay your hand upon yourself if you have any problem in the body, and then you raise up the other hand. The Lord is right there to bless you, and the Lord is right there to take the infirmity away. You will see the wonders of the Lord right there with you. Almighty God, we thank you very much for what we have heard. We know that you are a great and mighty God. You will never fail. Your promises will never fail. As we come to you now, on behalf of everyone here, I'm praying, O oh Lord, you'll touch everyone at the point of their need in Jesus' name. O oh Lord, I take authority about the works of the devil, that will destroy the works of the devil in their lives, and in their families, and in their bodies in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, that you'll break every yoke. You remove every curse from them. Set everyone free in Jesus' name. Those who have physical problems like an ear, like something swollen in the body, I come against that swelling right now. And I command swelling, come out in Jesus' name. Any brain disturbance or brain problem there or retardation there, oh Lord, I pray that your healing virtue will touch their brain. Heal their brain, make everything normal in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray that those who have been carrying about basket brain, they don't retain anything from now. Give them retentive memory in Jesus' name. Lord, any pain in the body, I command that the pain in the body, whether it's headache or in the chest or the back or in the bone or in the flesh, I command right now that pain with that sickness vanish away in Jesus' name. 
Lord, I pray for those who have been under spiritual attack, who have been having afflictions, oppressions in the day, in the night, pressing them, walking about in the body. I command right now, be set free in Jesus' name. And those who have uh, diseases like tuberculosis, like cancer, or like ulcer, or like high blood pressure, or any other kind of a terrible disease, I take authority over them right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. The disease of HIV and of AIDS, I take authority over you. Be healed in Jesus' name. I pray, oh Lord, for those who have any problem with uh, deformity in the body, uh, maybe it's the legs or the hands or whatever, I pray that you touch them right now. What the devil has deformed, I pray you transform it now in Jesus' name. That, Lord, they'll be able to rise up and walk. That short leg, grow out in Jesus' name. With that hand, stretch forth in Jesus' name. I pray for those who are deaf, for those who are dumb, I pray you touch their vocal cords. And I pray that you touch their eardrums. Make them hear, make them speak out clearly in Jesus' name. For those who are blind or partially blind or having dimness of sight, I pray you touch their eyesight right now. That they'll open their eyes and see very well in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for those who have any family problem here. I take authority over the family problems. I pray, Lord, you'll destroy the works of the devil in their families. There will be peace in their family, joy in their family, harmony and unity in their family in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, for all these, all those who are students here, and I pray that you'll touch their academic life. They will succeed. Where there's been failure before, success will come in Jesus' name. I pray that you'll provide for the needs of all these students and the adults too, so that every project they need to do, everything they need to do, you'll provide abundantly for them to do it successfully in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, that everyone here will have a miracle. We have signs and wonders that nobody will go empty-handed, that you'll do marvelous things in the life of everyone in Jesus' name. As we open our eyes now, we open our eyes to miracle, to healing, to deliverance, to provision, and to the goodness of the Lord in Jesus' name. We know you have touched everyone, and we know that we shall hear their testimonies. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Put your hand together and clap for the Lord Jesus.